It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Coach Mike Jasper from the Bethel Wildcats as we are previewing the 2023 college football season today here on Midwest Sportsnet and our stop, as I mentioned, with Bethel in McKenzie, Tennessee. Coach Jasper, let's start with last year really quickly. Come on into 2023 because there's a lot to talk about for last year. A fantastic season for you all. 11-0, undefeated regular season. You get tripped up in the first round of the playoffs against a very tough Kaiser team who winds up being the national runner-up last season. Tell us a little bit about last year. Oh, last year, uh, first of all, Joey, thanks for having me. But um, last year was a phenomenal year, uh, best year in school history. Um, but it was all due to uh, great staff, great kids coming together and just buying in. And we were able to do something special, but I, I'd be remiss. And, but I didn't, you know, I, I think I speak for everybody when we're a little disappointed with the Kaiser game. So I'm, I'm even more excited about the future. Um, it fueled our offseason, um, and these guys, a lot of guys coming back, these guys have bought in and been working hard all summer. Coach, it, it was a, a feisty spring game for you all as well. You split things up and let your assistant coaches take the helm, one team versus the other. Talk about the spring. Uh, the spring was great for us. We usually like to get things kicked off pretty early around here, get, you know, bad taste out of our mouth, obviously. If you don't win the national championship, you're, you're probably not as happy as you'd like to be. Um, but our spring was very productive. We were able to come out, um, get some great work done. Everybody come out of that thing healthy, but our spring game was a lot of fun this year, splitting it up. I, I brag on my staff a lot. Um, we got two coordinators, probably three guys on the staff that are primed and ready to run their own programs. So I try to give them as much practice as I can possibly. So we split it up into two equal teams and uh, I let my offensive and defensive coordinator call the game. And then we had some younger coaches that were their OCs and DCs. So everybody got some good quality work, uh, even the coaching staff. You know, Coach, to stay there just for a moment, I and I th think it's such a privilege for you to be able to have coaches like that on your staff and knowing that they're ready to take their own program. How nice is it to have them come back to be a part of what <laughs> could be another special year? Yeah, December. Uh, yeah, this the off season, the start of the off season, and, and the end during those hiring cycles are pretty stressful for me. Uh, but it's been a, it's been a blessing having those guys. Uh, being able to retain my staff and add good quality young people to it. Um, you know, at the NAI level, we're blessed to do what we do and and get to mentor uh, young men and young people around us. Uh, and I don't think that just stops with the players. I think it, it goes on to the staff. So, um, you know, my philosophy is to create an environment conducive to success for my coaches and my players. Um, so uh, I, I love bringing on guys and giving them an opportunity. And, you know, a lot of those guys are pouring into me just as much as I'm pouring into them. And I think that's what helps you be successful. Well, let's preview 23 just a little bit. And, and there are some names from last season that come back. And I know that has to be nice for you as well. Starting with Joaquin Colasso, who is the quarterback last year, or was the quarterback last year, heading back into this season, passed for more than 3,300 yards, 29 touchdowns. What a season for him. Yeah, Joaquin is a, is a phenomenal football player, uh, but he's kind of everything you want um, in a leader. Um, he comes – I mean, he's been there all summer. He's from Florida. Stayed in, in the big city of McKenzie, Tennessee, and uh, and has been training. Um, he's been Zooming with incoming freshmen. He's been – you know, he's just a consummate leader. So I mean, he's a phenomenal football player, but what he means to our team is so much more than what he actually does on the field as well because um, he's the type of player that brings along other guys with him. Another names, another name or two from that offense that you have returning. Terrence Roberts coming back in the backfield, uh, and also J.D. Dixon, who was a thousand yard receiver for you last year. Yeah, we are extremely blessed. Um, Terrence um, transferred to us from um, Reinhardt University. He was a great player um, already at this level, and then he came right in and had another great year. Uh, I believe first team on conference, so we're blessed to have him back. And then we've also added some pieces around him in our backfield. So he, I feel like we'll get a lot more production out of him this year, being able to take some of those licks off of him and, and spread the love a little bit. Um, J.D., time and time again, has shown up big for us. Um, another great leader, another great young man. 
uh, um, that that is, is is invaluable to our football program. So you got guys like that coming back. JD still has two years left, so I'll be blessed for quite some time. <laughs> and I think Terrence, this will be his last year, but we were able to add some guys. Uh, Martise Smith is coming over to us um, as a grad transfer. So really excited about our backfield. And, and of course, JD losing Davis Prather hurts, um, but we were able to uh, add Jalen Taylor. Uh, you know, he was another transfer from us. Um, you mentioned earlier, we were talking about that, that you know, the portal, the NAI didn't have a portal, um, but with COVID and the, those extra seasons and guys who are mature and then they want to go for different grad programs. Um, it's, it, it's been something that we've been blessed to capitalize off of. Um, so Marty Smith and Jaden Taylor, uh, Martiz is a running back and Jaden is a wide receiver. Um, who are very much well-proven players at this level, we're adding those guys in uh, to come in and help us compete. So very excited about those position groups, very excited about J.D. and uh, t Rob. Coach, tell us a little bit about that offensive line as well because to have the production that you all did, you, you need to have a, a solid front. Yeah, you definitely have to. Um, it's funny, me and me and Coach Bright joke. Coach Bright, we played against each other in college. He played at University of Cumberland. He's a triple option guy. He played for the legendary Coach Bland. Um, and then I'm just, you know, an old school power eye guy. Like, I you know, played offensive line in the NFL. So I think a lot of teams kept loading the box on us because they said these two guys love to run the ball. Um, so we were lucky to have some success passing. Um, so that front um, – did a great job in the run game, but they, they, we weren't able to display that toughness uh, as much as I would have liked. So I'm excited about their maturation throughout the spring, um, diving into the run game, getting a little bit better at that. Um, but they're they're an intelligent group of guys. I think that's where we're blessed up front. Um, they do have toughness. They do play hard. Uh, I think they, you know, embody their coach a little bit. I work with the O-line, uh, but they're extremely intelligent, and um, I don't think we can do what we do without those guys up front. But once again, when you have a quarterback like Joaquin that knows the protections and can get you in the right place, man, it, it's just it's been phenomenal for us. We're speaking now with Coach Mike Jasper from the Bethel Wildcats in his fifth season with the program there in McKenzie. And you're watching Midwest Sportsnet. I encourage you, please continue to watch these videos as we are previewing, previewing college football during the summer now. And we love to talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach, we move to the defensive side of the ball. A number of players returning, also some new faces. And I'd love you to talk about all of them. Zay King, someone who's coming back for you as well. Yes, love Zay King. He, he's a, a strong, athletic, uh, interior uh, D lineman that has the ability in our three down fronts to also play a little bit of a boundary in for us there in the four eye technique. Um, great leader, um, local guy, West Tennessee guy uh, that just puts his hands to the plow and works. Man, he he is a a staple on our defense, and I think it's fair to say that you know Coach Springer and those guys, Coach Kincaid, have done a phenomenal job with our defense. I think it's the best defense in the country, uh, you know, so um, they keep us in the game and they, and they do it. They get a lot of takeaways and they're just they're just freaking gritty. Um, I love our defense. Um, and Zay embodies that. Zay's a leader of that. So um, you got to have guys like Zay King um, to make the defense go up front. I like that description. And you all did have <coughs> such a strong defense, but. Your offense did a great job for you as well. Top 10 offense in the NAIA last year. And so I, th I think the two sides of the ball complemented each other very well. Darian Burns, someone also that is returning for you. You were talking about the line. Let's talk about the linebacker. Yeah, so Darian Burns is coming back for us. He's a really good linebacker for us. I think it's a fifth year, sixth year. I don't know with the COVID how that stuff works. Um, but it's helped. He's been around. He knows what we expect. Um, and he knows the pedigree of, of what Coach Spring is looking for on that defense. So him and uh, Markel Crawford um, at that Bandits position, um, and then, you know, Kedrick Walker coming back. I mean, we got a really – Coach Kincaid has done a great job with that linebacker group. Brody Franks, I mean, I could sit here and name all of our backers that are in that rotation. They also play for him on special teams as well. Um, and they're, they're all just, you know, heat-seeking missiles, man. They, they'll punch their gap out. They play hard. Um, and when they need to go sideline to sideline, they will. Um, but just as I mean, you talked about our offense having the success that we have and we do complement each other. But it, it's one of those things where we, you know, we don't want to let those guys down um, offensively and then defensively. You know, their, their mantra is count on me and, and you can uh, play in and play out. Those guys are phenomenal. 
Um, but in, in that linebacker core, you know, they get us lined up. They do what we're supposed to do. Um, and, and they don't make a lot of mistakes. And I think that's why we're able to be successful. And Darian's one of those people, too, that he's able to keep everyone aware of Bethel, has the YouTube channel, and yeah. uh, enjoy keeping up with the Wildcats through his eyes. Yeah, yeah. Darian has got a bright future in uh, in, in the media world. Um, I love watching some of his videos. At first, I, you know, I'm old school. I wasn't a big fan of it at first, but now with the NIL world and and all that I've had to have had to kind of uh, loosen up a little bit. And Darian is one of the reasons why I have because I watch his content from time to time. And he's a great young man. It's fun to watch. And I know it, it just it just shows what the life of a football player, I think, is great for people to get that inside track. We were talking just briefly before we came on the air here with this one. You were saying there are some new faces that we would be able to see on defense this year. Yes, I'm extremely excited, man. Um, like I said, top when you had the top defense in the country, um, I think people recognize what we're doing and they want to be a part of it. And Coach Springer and Coach Kincaid, Coach Wallace, Coach Brewer, they they you know they hit the trail hard in the recruiting process. And uh, I think everybody, I think it's fair to say everybody's kind of worried about our secondary after this year. We had such a phenomenal, mature secondary of guys that played really well to, with each other, complimented each other. And we were able to go out and, and bring guys in for spring ball um, to get them the experience. And I, I feel I feel great about it. Uh, Jaron Rainey, uh, my, my man Banks over there at the Rover, we, we were able to sign some guys that a lot of uh, experience. And then bringing Demetrius Gilbert back last year, h- h- him being able to get his feet wet this past season um, after spending some time away from the game, um, and then to see what he's done this spring, um, he, he's he's really fast, great ball skills at the corner position. So I'm really excited about this group, um, this entire defense um, from, you know, Zay King, KJ Hicks, Anthony Shipton's another guy that we brought in up front, uh, that linebacker core, some guys that we have signed uh, that we'll get to see what they can do um, when they get here this summer uh, on August 4th. Um, and then that secondary, uh, the, the way we've been able to replace some quality, quality uh, seniors that we lost, um, I'm just really excited to see how the defense performs this year. And camp will start in less than a month now. Yeah. Coach. I know you have to be excited about that. You mentioned Demetrius Gilbert. He also carried a big role for you all on special teams. Yeah, Demetrius is one. Of the, we A couple years back, we had a guy named uh, Jacoby Reddick, and Demetrius was a freshman. Um, and then we could see right away like how blessed we were in the special teams game because um, Jacoby's one of the greatest uh, returners I've ever seen. And then to have Demetrius and be like, huh, they're tit for tat when he was a freshman. Um, so the, the plays that he can make once he gets the ball in his hands, any way you can get the ball in his hands, it's exciting to see. He can field punts. He can do kickoffs. And you kind of just sort of sit back and, and watch and see what happens <laughs> when he gets the ball. Well, camp's not that far away, and the season then not very far away as well. It begins August 26th against an up-and-coming point team, and then coach three home games in a row. Uh, you get another stretch of three home games in a row. You have seven home games on your schedule this year. What a blessing that has to be, and that includes games against Georgetown at home. You get Roosevelt at home, nice intersectional non-conference matchup, and then Lindsey Wilson at home as well to close things out. Yeah, it's it's a blessing. These past couple of years, it's we've had to be road warriors, so it's nice to kind of have it the flip side this year. Um, unfortunately, though, you know how it is uh, with NAI. A couple of programs that shut down, and we 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 were blessed to to benefit from that. And um, great schedule this year. I'm excited about it. A couple new teams um, I've never faced before. Roosevelt. I think that's great for NAI football. I think having those crossover matchups between two. Uh, formidable conferences is great. Um, I think the Mid-South, um, top to bottom, is phenomenal. I think we're the SEC of NAIA. I'll, I'll say that uh, till I die, that it's the hardest conference in NAIA football. It's one of the hardest conferences in small college football. So um, to be able to get some of those matchups at home this year is going to be nice. Uh, we, you know, last year I think we played Reinhardt on the road, Georgetown on the road, Lindsey Wilson on the road. Um, and and it, it just it, it was tough, tough sledding. Um, so I'm excited to play. Um, we have great fans, great community support. Uh, our parents are phenomenal. They, they'll travel. Um, so we have a, a good turnout at, even at the road games. But it'll be nice to be at home this year. 
Again, August 26th against Point. That's when things get started officially. But camp is just a couple, three, four weeks away. It's going to it's gonna get there before you know it, Coach, and I know you're excited about that. But enjoy the rest of your summer for a little bit. Take a little time because the season is going to be here before you know it, and it will be a lot of fun. Coach Mike Jasper, we will follow the Wildcats this season. We're very thankful, thankful that you took some time with us to hear on Midwest Sportsnet. Thanks for having me, Joey. It was a blast.